This is Amy Bagoni recording from the Blessed Hope. This was posted on January 14th in 2022. Son, hate, sin, part three. Romans 12 and 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Jesus was a friend to the lost and broken people of his day, but he never condoned their sin. Instead, he said to them, Go and sin no more. He gave them deliverance and the power to overcome sin. The scriptures tell us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But he did not want us to stay in those sins. Repentance is a military term. It speaks of going one way and then making a complete turnaround in the opposite direction. The woman caught in adultery, the stealing tax collector, the murderer, Paul, were just a few of the named sinners during Jesus' day. These forgiven people became the saints of the early church. They came under obedience to the Mosaic law and the stronger law of Christ that even dealt with their thoughts. He that looks in lust after a woman has committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus taught very strongly against all forms of sin, even in a person's thought life. Someone once said regarding sinful thoughts, You cannot keep a bird from flying into a tree, but you can sure keep it from building a nest. We are taught to recognize, resist, and rebuke the devil and evil thoughts. This concept we tried to train our children when they were small. My husband and our oldest son visited someone one time, and EJ made my husband proud during their visit when that family member tried to get my husband to go see something in the town. My son spoke to his dad, Why would you go see that, Dad? That is sin, and you should not even go look at sin. I have always loved it when the Lord used my children to speak to family about what is sinful. They always took it better from them than they did us. It is our prayer that our children will never forget this important truth. What you look at, what you see, will affect your heart, and what affects your heart will affect your actions. The scriptures record how that we as God's people should hate sin, resist evil, and evil ways. In Amos chapter 5 verses 14 through 15, it says, Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Job 1 and 1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Proverbs 8 and 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate Psalms 45 and 7 says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. We must make sure that we know the truth, and it will keep us from every false way. The same way that a bank teller knows a fake bill 
it comes simply by familiarity with the real. My husband has always helped me in this area. When we first got married, he used to tell me, Amy, if you don't know truth well enough to teach it to someone else, you don't really know it. Psalms 119 and 128 says, Therefore I esteem all of thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Again, that's some Psalms 119 and 128. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We cannot truly be the Lord's if we say we love him and then disobey his word. My husband likes to share the story of uh, while at a prison ministry when he asked a room full of inmates, Do you love Jesus? All hands raised. And then the question of the proof of that love, do you keep his commandments? Very few hands raised. Honesty before God is the first step to having a real relationship with him. You cannot change what you do not acknowledge. However, for those who are willing to come clean before the Lord, he is willing to give the grace to obey his word. He will make himself known to every hungry soul. We are called to hate sin, to hate evil, but to love the lost sinner like Jesus does. Loving a sinner means to care for their soul, to share the gospel with them, but it is not to be their close friend. Those who are very young especially need to be aware of this truth, because whomever we choose to walk beside will affect who we are, what we do, and eventually where we end up in heaven or hell. And the scripture explains this clearly in James 4, 4 through 7. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? For whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think the scripture saith in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace? Therefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Question for the day. Are you keeping the Lord's commandments? Do you truly love him? He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. John 14 and 21. Amen. Father, I thank you that you promise if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. So I pray for myself and the listener tonight that you'll help us to love your precepts, to love your law, to love your word, to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. And Lord, I pray that you will teach us to see sin as you see it, as exceedingly sinful and wicked and help us to hate what you hate and love what you love. I ask these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen.